and welcome to Celebrity Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. In the spotlight tonight are Steve Backshell from Deadly 60. His specialist subject is sharks. Noreen Khan, a radio presenter on the BBC Asian Network. She'll be answering questions on Marilyn Monroe. The comedian, Rhys James, who's appeared on Live at the Apollo. His subject, the American version of The Office. And Caroline Flint, former MP and Cabinet Minister. She'll be answering questions on the film Alien. Four people who have made a success of their careers but probably haven't faced a challenge quite like this. There is no real equivalent of the mastermind black chair and they're doing it for charity, of course. And the winner takes away not only the trophy but the honour of becoming a celebrity mastermind champion. The rules pretty much unchanged. 90 seconds on their specialist subject, two minutes on general knowledge await them. So let us ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is? Steve Backshaw. Your occupation? Is naturalist. And your chosen charity? Is the World Land Trust. And your chosen subject? Sharks. In 90 seconds, starting now, sharks differ from most other fish in that their skeletons consist primarily not of bone, but of what? Cartilage. Yep. Sharks of the family Alopidae are known for their long curved tails which make up about half the length of their bodies and which they use to stun small prey. By what common name are they known? Threshers. Yep. Male sharks can be identified by the presence of a pair of appendages attached to their pelvic fins which are used in mating. What name is usually given to them? Plaspers. Yep. Sharks are hunted intensively for a variety of products including squalene which is used in cosmetics and folk remedies. Squalene is traditionally obtained from which of the inter Internal organs of a shark's body? Liver. Yep. To combat the rapid decline of shark populations, a Pacific Island country banned all shark fishing in its waters in 2009 and created what is commonly regarded as the world's first shark sanctuary. Which country? Um, Polynesia? Palau. A 2016 study led by Julius Nielsen investigated the longevity of a particular species of shark and estimated one individual to be around 392 years old. That species is the longest living known vertebrate on Earth. What species? The Greenland shark. Yeah. Sharks in the order Hexanchiformes are unusual in the number of gill slits they have, six or seven, depending on the species. How many gill slits do almost all the other sharks have on each side of their heads? Five. Yep. A long extinct shark with an estimated body length of around 50 feet is named for its enormous teeth, which can still be found fossilised on shores today. What's it called? The uh, Megalodon. Yep. Exactly that. No passes, Steve. You've scored seven points. <laughs> and our next contender, please. And your name is? Noreen Khan. Your occupation? Radio presenter. Your chosen charity? Creating memories. And your chosen subject? Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe in 90 seconds. Here we go. The surname on Marilyn Monroe's birth certificate is that of her mother, Grace's estranged husband. What surname? Mortensen. Yep. Monroe lived for some time in an orphanage when her legal guardian, Grace McKee, moved to West Virginia. She gave her a choice between a return to the orphanage or marriage to the son of a neighbour. What was the name of the man she married shortly after her 16th birthday? James Doherty. Yep. Marilyn Monroe died in August 1962. She's said to have been buried in a favourite green dress created by an Italian fashion designer. Which one? Versace. Emilio Pucci. Monroe was assigned a dramatic coach by Columbia Pictures to help her prepare for the role of a burlesque performer in Ladies of the Chorus. She worked with this coach for many of her subsequent films. What was her name? Natasha Lytis. Yep. In 1954, she was suspended by 20th Century Fox because she refused to take a role in a new film, a musical in which Frank Sinatra would have been her co-star. What was its title? Oh, gosh. Forgotten. Sorry. Monroe married the baseball player Joe DiMaggio in 1954 and part of their honeymoon was spent in a country in Asia where DiMaggio took part in an exhibition tour. Which country? Korea. Japan. In 1953, Monroe posed for a photo shoot for Look magazine. The photographer became a close friend and business partner and the two founded Marilyn Monroe Productions in 1955. What was his name? Milton Green. Yep. As a child in foster care, Monroe adopted a pet dog in her uncompleted final film, Something's Gotta Give. Her character has a dog with the same name. What name? 
Dawn, think of a dog's name. Oh, uh, Lippy. No, close, actually. Tippy. Tippy. <laughs> You have one past Noreen, the film in which you refused to take part was The Girl in Pink Tights. You have scored four points. Thank you. And our next contender, please. And your name is? Rhys James. Your occupation? Comedian. Your chosen charity. Kidney Research UK. And your chosen subject. The US Office. The American remake of the great British comedy series. Here we go. The Office, an American workplace, is a mock documentary series about life in a branch of a paper company called Dunder Mifflin. It's set in which city in Pennsylvania? Scranton. Yep. In the episode Healthcare, Michael's told to choose a new healthcare plan for the office staff. Instead, he delegates the job to a colleague who removes all benefits from the plan and says, in the wild, there is no healthcare. What's the name of the colleague? Dwight Schrute. Yep. In Office Olympics, the staff create games to play while Michael and Dwight have gone out. This includes a race that used boxes of paper as snowshoes. What does Pam say is the Icelandic name for the game? Flonkerton. Yes. In season three, the sales rep Jim has transferred to the Stamford branch of the company in grief counselling. He's asked to supervise the work of his new colleague, Karen Filippelli. She is played by which actress? Rashida Jones. Yep. Michael runs an annual award ceremony for the office staff, which he says are like the Golden Globes, but less mean. Winners have included the HR rep, Toby, for extreme repulsiveness. What are the awards called? The Dundies. Yep. Toby is replaced as the HR rep by Holly Flax, played by Amy Ryan, when he leaves his job to move abroad. While he's there, he seriously injures himself in a zip wire accident in which country? Costa Rica. Yep. Mindy Kaling, who plays Kelly, was also a writer for the show. She wrote a season three episode in which the office staff attend a celebration that's described by Michael as a Hindu Halloween. What's the title of the episode? Diwali? Yep. When Charles Minor, the new vice president for the Northeast region, visits the Scranton office, he's offered a buffet where all the bagels have been cut into a C shape for Charles. The character is played by which British actor? Idris Elba. Is correct. You got them all right, Rhys. You've got eight points. <laughs> and our final contender, please. And your name is? Caroline Flint. Your occupation? Uh, commentator, former politician. Your chosen charity? Uh, NACOA, the National Association for Children of Alcoholics. And your chosen subject? Alien. Alien, that landmark 1979 science fiction horror film. Here we go. In the film, a spaceship, a commercial towing vehicle with a crew of seven, hauls a vast automated refinery through space back to Earth. What's the name of the ship? Nostromo. Yep, the ship's crew is initially in a state of hypersleep for the long voyage back to Earth. Which member of the crew is the first to wake up? Kane. Yep. Mother, the ship's computer, has changed the ship's course to a planetoid in response to a transmission of unknown origin. The transmission repeats at intervals of how many seconds? 12 seconds. Yep. Three of the crew land on a planetoid to investigate the source of the transmission and find thousands of leathery eggs inside a derelict spacecraft. Dallas, the ship's captain, and Kane, the executive officer, are two members of the landing party. What's the name of the third? Lambert. Yep. When Kane touches one of the eggs, the creature inside makes a fluttering movement which can be seen through the translucent egg case. This special effect was created by a pair of hands in rubber gloves. Whose hands? Ridley Scott's. Yes. After a creature hatches from one of the eggs and smothers Kane's face, the science officer Ash tries to detach it, but its blood drips out and dissolves through the ship's floor. When Dallas sees what the blood has done, he says he hasn't seen anything like it except for what? Molecular acid. Yes. As the crew settles down to a meal, the alien makes its dramatic entrance as it bursts from Kane's chest, which actor plays Kane? Uh, John Hurt. Yeah, Ripley, the ship's third officer, played by Sigourney Weaver, becomes suspicious of Ash. Dallas tells her that his previous science officer was replaced by Ash just two days before they left which planet? Uh, Thetis. Yeah, the first person to be killed by the fully grown alien is Brett, the engineering technician. As he searches for something alone, what was he trying to find? Jones the cat. Yes, the ship's cat. Caroline, you've scored nine points. Thank you. So, at the end of the first round, the specialist subjects, let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place, with four points, Noreen. 
Third place with seven points, Steve. Second place with eight points, Reese. First place with nine points, Caroline. So, now it is the general knowledge round. And if there's a tie at the end of it, then the number of passes is taken into account and the person with the fewer passes is the winner. And if they're tied on passes as well, there has to be a tie break. So, let's ask Noreen to join us back in the chair again, please. And, uh, you are a presenter and a comedian. I am indeed. What's easiest is it? Is it presenting or being funny? Well, the difference between, you know, doing live comedy and radio is that with live comedy, I can obviously be a little bit more colourful with my language. Ah. Whereas on the radio, you're slightly limited. But mm. live comedy, you know, standing in front of a live audience, it, it can be quite scary, but not as scary as sitting in this chair. <laughs> oh, nothing is as scary as that. I'm full, I, I wouldn't know. I've never done it, never intend to. But do you have an image of the person, persons, you're talking to? Is there any sense of your audience? Well, generally, you, you feel like you're talking to one person. I'm talking about radio now. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. Very, yeah, it, it's lovely in the sense because we get a lot of non-Asian people actually mm. listening to the BBC Asian Network as well, which is really nice. Anyone that's got an interest in sort of British Asian music or, you know, South Asian music and culture. And I've been doing my show on the BBC Asian Network for quite a few years now. And I kind of see my listeners as extended family. So, um, yeah, you, you kind of feel like... There's somebody there who's always tuning in and I, I'm like a friend to them and uh. I suppose they're like a friend to me. In this contest, you have four points, but you now have two minutes of general knowledge in which you can catch up. Here we go. A well-known composition by George Gershwin, written for piano and orchestra and first performed in 1924, is entitled Rhapsody in what colour? Blue. Yes, the symbol used in astronomy and astrology for one of the planets in our solar system is also used as a symbol for the male sex. Which planet? Jupiter. Mars, a variety of quiche made with cream and bacon, shares its name with the former region of France which bordered Belgium, Germany and Luxembourg. What's the name of the quiche? Loretta. Lorraine. Which city on the North Island of New Zealand has been the country's capital since 1865? Wellington? Yep. Which London art gallery has the website address npg.org.uk? Louvre? National Portrait Gallery. What's the name for the large heavy glove that was part of a suit of armour in medieval times? It was thrown to the ground to issue a challenge to an opponent. Armour. Gauntlet. Adam Sandler plays a New York jeweller and gambling addict in a 2019 film that features the basketball star Kevin Garnett playing himself. What's the title of the film? Pass. The tragus is a prominent piece of cartilage at the opening of each of which pair of sensory organs? Lungs? Ear. Yeah. Billy Ray Cyrus had a UK hit single in 1992 entitled Achy Breaky Heart. What's the professional name of his daughter, the actress and singer, who was born Destiny Hope Cyrus later the same year? Miley Cyrus. Yeah. In America, the FBI is a national security and law enforcement agency. Its initials stand for Federal Bureau of what? Investigation. Yep. In a 1970s television sitcom, Major Gower and Miss Tibbs and Miss Gatsby were permanent guests at which dysfunctional hotel? Oh, gosh. Faulty Towers. Yes. One of the Mr. Men characters created by Roger Hargreaves is particularly prone to accidents and he's round, blue and wrapped in bandages. What's his name? Mr. Bump? Yeah. The little and the short-eared are two of the five most common British species of what bird of prey? Um, pass. Since 2005, Stuart Bingham, Neil Robertson and Sean Murphy have all won the annual World Championship in which sport? Snooker. Snooker is correct. You had two passes, the little and the short-eared owl, and uncut gems is... Um, the title of that Adam Sandler film. You have now, Noreen, 11 points. Thank you. And now again, Steve, please. And, Steve, you've got this knack of being able to get through to kids. I mean, older people as well, but, but specifically young people. How do you do it? What's the secret? Well, I think that a lot of young people who are into natural history, it becomes their absolute fascination, particularly if you work on the right kinds of animals. I mean, the kind of kids that I speak to would have known every single one of those shark questions without a doubt. No. They would have been shouting at the television, particularly the one I got wrong. 
How does that work? Well, Sir David Attenborough said that we're all born with a fascination for wildlife. Yeah. We just, some of us tend to lose it through life. And that's what I see so often in young people. I, I see young people who have caught on to natural history. It's become their fascination and occasionally their obsession. You um, put yourself apparently in danger. Have you ever really been at risk? A, a fraction of times with wild animals, uh, one particular occasion would be swimming into a pool when we were diving with crocodiles and coming face to face with a hippo on the bottom of a, uh, a, a pool in the Okavango Delta the in Botswana. Of the pool. Yeah, I think we were very, very lucky in that situation. But, you know, it's been. Well, a... hang on, don't stop there. What <laughs> happened? I mean. I'm pretty confident that it was the first time it had witnessed a human scuba diver before, and it was, <laughs> it was just as confused as we were, and that moment of hesitation on its part gave us a chance to scarper. Few people can say, so there I was at the bottom of this pool, and there was a hippo, you know. You have seven points, and the score to beat is 11. Let's see how you do with your general knowledge. Here we go. Concorde, Republic and Gare du Nord are underground railway stations on the metro system of which European capital city? Paris. Yep, the song News of the World by The Jam is the theme tune to a television comedy improvisation show that began in 2005 with Dara O'Brien as its host and Hugh Dennis as a regular panellist. What show? Mock the Week. Yep, in a type of Caribbean dance, participants lean over backwards to pass beneath the horizontal bar, which is progressively lowered each time they go under it. What's the name of the dance? The... Ah! Uh, pass! <laughs> Whose forces defeated those of Harold II at the Battle of Hastings in 1066? Later that year, he was crowned King of England in Westminster Abbey. Uh, Harold. William the Conqueror. Which American singer had UK hit singles in the 1970s entitled Sweet Caroline, Beautiful Noise and Forever in Blue Jeans? Neil Diamond. Yes. Aya Napa is a tourist resort on the southeast coast of an island country in the Mediterranean Sea. Which country? Cyprus. Yep. What's the name of the Conservative MP who was appointed as Home Secretary in July 2019? She succeeded Sajid Javid in the role. Pretty Patel. Yep. What's the legal term for the protection given to a literary work, which means that it cannot be reproduced without the author's permission? It can be represented symbolically by a letter C inside a circle. Copyright. Yep. Which team sport is played on a rectangular pitch that is 22 yards long, 10 feet wide, and is bounded at either end by a bowling crease and a set of stumps? Cricket? Yes. Yorktown, Washington on your side, and the Adams administration are songs from a stage musical that opened in London in 2017. What musical? Hamilton. Yes. What's the name of the legendary place in South America said by 16th century explorers to be full of gold? Its name translates from Spanish as the Gilded One. El Dorado. Yep. In a 1935 film, characters played by the Marx Brothers sabotage a performance of Il Trovatore in New York. What's the title of the film? Duck Soup. A Knight of the Opera. What word from the Latin for wall refers to an artwork that's painted directly onto a wall? Graffiti. Mural is the answer we were looking for. Uh, you had one pass, Steve. Limbo is that... <sighs> you knew that, didn't you? Done yeah. it a million times. You have, though, a total of 16 points. <laughs> and now, Rhys, again, please. And Rhys. You're a comedian. That's right. So what's been the biggest change in comedy since you started? Because you started very young. You were 17, weren't you, when you started? I was 17, which was longer yeah. ago than it looks. Um, <laughs> and what, what, what's been the big change? There's uh, a billion more comedians. It's been the big change. Uh, I've contributed to that, obviously. And now everyone you meet is a stand-up comedian. Can I say almost everyone you meet? Sure, sorry. There are sorry, those of us who realise that we could never... Anyway. Oh, you must have done some at some point. Oh, unintentionally, yeah, yes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. How much more careful do you have to be these days about being funny? I mean, the only risk really is, is the internet, because in the room, people do tend to understand where someone's coming from. It's when things are quoted and then taken out of context that it becomes uh -huh. an issue. I mean, if, if there's a baying mob, then maybe you did say something genuinely offensive. Anyway, look, Rhys, you, you now have uh, eight points. 16 is the score to beat. Let's see if you can do it with your general knowledge. Here we go. What word was added to the title of the 1956 play Look Back in Anger by John Osborne to make the title of a UK number one single by Oasis 40 years later? Don't. Yep. The traditional nursery rhyme that begins half a pound of tuppenny rice features the recurring line Pop goes the what? Weasel. Yep. A march-like dance often performed in competitive ballroom dancing has a Spanish name that means double step. What dance? 
Rumba? Paso doble. In Greek mythology, the first mortal woman was said to possess a jar or box which contained all the evils in the world. What was her name? Pandora. Yeah. The first episode of a television soap broadcast in October 1972 featured the funeral of Annie Sugden's husband, Jacob. Which soap? Coronation Street. Emmerdale. In civil engineering, suspension, cantilever and truss are all types of what structure? Bridge. Yep. What's the name of the director known for films such as Mars Attacks and Corpse Bride and for his numerous collaborations with the actor Johnny Depp? Um... I can't remember his name. Quentin Tarantino. Tim Burton. Yeah. Which item of horse riding tack has a part at the front called a pommel and one at the rear known as a cantle? Reins. Saddle. In the 1990s, the abbreviation YBA was used to refer collectively to people such as Damien Hirst, Tracy Emin and Rachel White Reed, many of whom had studied at Goldsmiths College in London. What do the letters YBA stand for? You better... Yeah, <laughs> young, I'll else. save you from yourself, <laughs> young British artists. Which British Prime Minister said in a speech in 1918, what is our task to make Britain a fit country for heroes to live in? Um, Clement Attlee. David Lloyd George, what term refers to a birth in which the baby's buttocks are the first parts to emerge? Funny. Breach, the port city of Busan, sometimes known as Pusan, stands at the southeastern tip of which Asian country? Uh, Japan. South Korea, a critically acclaimed French actress who rose to fame at the Comédie Française in the late 19th century, became known in her lifetime as the Divine Sarah. What was her surname? Henri. Bernhardt. No passes, Rhys. You have 12 points. <laughs> And finally, Caroline, again, please. Caroline, do you want to be remembered as a politician who started a tap dancing troupe in the House of Commons, or as a politician? Well... That's only a half serious <laughs> question, by the way. <laughs> Well, my career as a politician lasted longer than being in the Division Bells, which is what we were called. The Division that. Bells, the, the name Division of the troop. Bells, that's right. right. It was a great time, and uh, you know, you know what it's like, John. Those votes in the evening, uh, we were having our tap dancing lessons and having a lot of fun, uh, whilst maybe some other MPs were elsewhere in the estate, maybe having a, a drop or two. Let's put it that way. What's the most horrible thing that happened to you in your political life? How long? How long have you got? How long? Just have you take got? one. Uh, well, um, I have to say, one time was in Prime Minister's Questions uh, when I was very new and uh, I wasn't on the order paper and, you know, you bob up and down to catch the speaker's eye. And to be honest, I, th I gave up towards the end. I thought I wasn't going to get called and I completely zoned out and then Betty Boothroy called me and I completely forgot my question and uh, sat down. That was very, very Ooh. embarrassing. Do you miss it? Politics? Oh, look, politics um, isn't just about being in Parliament. It's about, you know, everything that affects us all every day. So you can, uh, you know, you can take the sort of MP out of the House of Commons, but you can't take the politics out of the girl. You're not going to go back in, though? Who knows? <laughs> oh, oh, You're not oh. getting an excuse It's not tonight, often John. that Mastermind breaks a story, but here no, we go. Caroline Flint says she's going back into politics. <laughs> At the moment, um, uh, I'm just concentrating trying to answer these questions that you're going to give me. All right. Now to this contest, you have uh, nine points. The score to beat is 16. If you're to become a Mastermind celebrity champion, here we go. The proverbial advice not to risk everything on a single venture is don't put all your eggs in one what? Basket. Yeah, a comet which orbits the sun on average once every 76 years and was correctly predicted by an English astronomer to be visible from Earth again in the 1750s is now named after him. Which astronomer? Haley. Yep. The engineer Igor Sikorsky took 30 years to construct an aircraft that could take off and land vertically. He built his first practical version in 1939. What type of aircraft was it? Rocket. Helicopter. The Second Indochina War, which lasted from 1954 to 75, is more commonly known by the name of the country in Southeast Asia where most of the conflict took place. Which country? Uh, Japan. Vietnam. In the human body, oxygen enters the blood through hundreds of millions of tiny air sacs known as alveoli, contained in which pair of organs? Uh, lungs. Yep. Am I bothered is a catchphrase of the argumentative schoolgirl Lauren Cooper. Who created this comedy character? Uh, Matt Lucas. Catherine Tate. Wolfram is an alternative name for which metal? Iron. 
Tungsten, a type of woolen covering for the head and neck, is named after a Crimean village which was the site of a famous battle in 1854. What's the name of the garment? Balaclava. Yep, which large animal is the official symbol of the American Republican Party? It was originally drawn in the 1870s by a Harper's Weekly cartoonist as an insult about that party's vote. Donkey. Elephant. Which American singer released an album entitled 1989 after the year of her birth? It won her the 2015 Grammy Award for Album of the Year. Did you say the question again? Which American singer released an album entitled 1989 after the year of her birth? It won her the 2015 Grammy Award for Album of the Year. Mm. Taylor Swift? Yeah. In August 2020, which British driver won the Formula One British Grand Prix for a seventh time? Lewis Hamilton. Yes. What 1950 film has the final line? All right, Mr DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Uh... Sunset Boulevard? Yes, a new bridge with a total length of almost one and a half miles was opened in the northeast of England in 1981 and was the world's longest single span suspension bridge for 16 years. Which bridge? Oh. Oh. The Tyne. The Humber. You have Caroline. 16 points. <laughs> Let us have a look at the final scores in this very close context. In fourth place with 11 points, Noreen. Third place with 12 points, Reese. Second place with 16 points and one pass. Steve, first place with 16 points and no passes, Caroline. Which means <laughs> that Caroline takes home the trophy and is tonight's celebrity mastermind. And you look surprised and delighted, Caroline. And relieved. And um, relieved. <laughs> yes. And what are you going to do with the trophy? Oh, it will go in a, a very special place and I will make sure that all my family and friends uh, never hear the end of it. Congratulations. Thank you. And you do not have to be a celebrity to take part in the regular Mastermind programme. If you'd like to appear in the next series on BBC Two, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind and you can follow us at Mastermind Quiz. Either way, do join us again next time for more Masterminds and thank you for watching. Goodbye. Champion. It's absolutely brilliant. And uh, I will treasure this. Thank you.